Welcome back everyone to a new video and today we're going to be making methyl ammonium chloride. Let's get into it. So I'm going to be making the methyl ammonium chloride using a little bit of a different approach than uh, is most commonly cited. And that is using these hexamine field tablets, more specifically hexamethylene tetraamine. And well, I have an entire box of them. I bought these a while ago. I don't even know exactly why I bought them. Um, but I bought them. So I have a crap ton of this and we can use this to make our methyl ammonium chloride. Okay, so I'm going to start off here with a mortar and pestle and I'm going to go ahead and grind up 70 grams of these tablets. And we only need the scale because these are already pre-weighed out. Each one's 14 grams. There's four tablets to each one. Oh, these things absorbed a lot of water. What the hell? Hold on, let me see if the other ones are like this. Ooh, that looks uh, pretty bad. So much for their 100 year storage life on the container. Yeah, why is there, man, these things just not sealed good? That is, uh, wow, that is pretty awful. Hold on, I'm gonna go through the rest of these and see if they're all like this. Okay, wow, so in fact, they are all like this. What a garbage product. Um, they've probably been sitting there for about a year now. Uh, yeah, that uh, waterproof storage tray and 100 year shelf life, yeah, my ass. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give these the benefit of the doubt and try to light them on fire and see if they still burn. Uh, does not. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it is uh, burning a little bit, and it just literally extinguished itself. <laughs> yeah, these things are garbage. If you needed these in a survival situation, uh, yeah, you're screwed. So here we go, here's our 70 grams of hexamine. Okay, so I'm first gonna go ahead and set up this round bottom flask onto this stand right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add all 70 grams of our hexamine. Okay, now to our flask with the hexamine, I'm gonna go ahead and add 200 milliliters of water. And as soon as I see this, I totally forgot one thing that's gonna give us issues again. And that is that these contain wax coatings on the outside. So there's gonna be some insoluble wax. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to do a, once this dissolves, I'm just gonna do a simple gravity filtration. Okay, here's our filtrate. Um, somehow a little of it still got through. I have no clue how that's even possible, but yeah, you know, whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add this column on top here. And on top of that, I'm gonna add this. Essentially my version of a vacuum adapter because uh, mine broke. It lobbed itself out of a flask and hit the table. So you now we gotta use this just in case any nasty fumes are produced. And last but not least, I'm gonna add a pressure equalized addition funnel. Okay, now I'm gonna slowly add our HCL into our hexamine solution. Okay, so our first edition is done. Now I'm going to start on the second one. As you can see, nothing really too interesting has happened. And uh, that's kind of good. It shouldn't be doing anything crazy. Okay, our additions are now fully done. All you got to do is let this sit here for a couple hours and wait for the hydrolysis reaction to finish. Okay, so it's the next day here. I called last night a wrap. Anyway, now it's time to go ahead and turn on the heat and heat this thing up. And this will, uh, you know, push our hydrolysis even further. And then this will also start making our methylamine HCL. Okay, it's about two hours later. Um, we're starting to kind of get up a boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. Um, since this has been heating for two hours, which is uh, plenty good. And uh, yeah, now it's time to wait for this to cool and then we can extract our methylamine HCL. So yeah, let's go ahead and turn off stirring here. And now all we gotta do is evaporate down this solution. So since I'm gonna be going away for the next couple of days, I'm gonna do a sun-powered um, evaporation, you know? It's free, requires no energy. Well, I mean, it requires energy, but uh, no, uh, 
you know, it's all free energy from the sky. Okay, so the reaction proceeded to some extent because I can smell the formaldehyde. Um, and it's not really good to smell because it is carcinogenic, um, but not anything crazy carcinogenic. Anyway, so here's going to be our evaporation tray. The nice Florida sun. This should evaporate out pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and dump it all into here. Okay, so it's uh, been about two days later since sitting in the sun. I moved it to this glass dish. I just went out and bought one because I was going to need one. Um, and yeah, it did reduce its uh, volume a bit, but it's going to need heat over a hot plate to fully reduce it down. Let's go ahead, add this onto the big one, and we'll just do slight heating. So a two should be fine. Okay, so here's our uh, crystals after drying. Yes, they are yellow, and yes, it is still wet. This stuff is extremely hydroscopic and holds onto water very well. So, I mean, there's not that much water in it, but yeah. And it kind of turned yellow from some decomposition. Uh, yeah, lovely. Yellow chemistry, great. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the purification process. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to this beaker. All right, now to purify this, to get rid of any ammonium chloride, I'm gonna add denatured alcohol. In theory, uh, at least according to the literature, Ammonium chloride is not soluble in ethanol, um, well, sparingly soluble, where uh, methylamine hydrochloride is soluble in alcohol. I think uh, 30 grams per 100 milliliters. So let's go ahead and add some of this in before this absorbs too much moisture. And I'm also gonna add some into our pan here. Okay, now let's give this a nice good stir. Okay, let's do a gravity filtration now. Okay, so after our filtration, this is what was left in the filter paper. Uh, this should just be ammonium chloride. So here's our filtrate solution. This is what we're after. And as you can see, we already got some crystals down there. That's presumably our methylamine hydrochloride. Um, and yeah, it's actually evaporated, uh, I don't know, 40 milliliters or so, um, just from sitting out. So I'm gonna go ahead and evaporate this down to a nice concentrated solution. And uh, hopefully we can go ahead and collect our methylene. Well, I actually moved it to my Goodwill crystallizing dish that I bought. It's uh, just this nice little Pyrex dish. So I'll use this instead, more surface area. Okay, it definitely should be concentrated enough now. Um, it's pretty much crystallizing right on the sides. So that is good news. Once this cools down, we should get nice methylene crystals. Well, at least crude methylamine crystals. Okay, here's our crude methylamine hydrochloride. Okay, so it's the next day here, and here's our methylamine hydrochloride we collected. Um, I decided I'm gonna do a recrystallization on it, because, like, might as well. I'm gonna lose some of my product, but whatever. I can make more easily. So I'm gonna do a recrystallization. So the only thing about crystallizations is you lose product in the maneuver. And they can be finicky sometimes, but anyway. Okay, and we got 35 grams of it. So I'm gonna use denatured alcohol again, and I'm going to add about 100 milliliters. And I'm gonna add 250 milliliter portions of our denatured alcohol. I'm gonna add this to a hot plate and heat it up until it fully dissolves. Okay, so there is some insoluble stuff, which I'm guessing to be ammonium chloride. Um, Cause last time I believe I used more ethanol. Ammonium chloride is slightly soluble in ethanol, so I think it's just ammonium chloride because there's not very much of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a gravity filtration. Okay, here's our filtrate. Uh, you see we're around 200 milliliters, and I'm going to boil this down to about 125 milliliters because I did add too much ethanol trying to dissolve the undissolvable stuff. All right, so we're down around 150 milliliters, and this should be good. It looks like it's already starting to precipitate some stuff, probably some ammonium chloride again, but... Um, yeah, we'll let this cool down. Okay, so here it is after cooling. Definitely should have used more solvent. Um, that's for sure, but just pour off the excess solvent in there. And there's our crystals in there. There's still some solvent. That at the bottom, that distinct layer, I think that's ammonium chloride. The thing that makes the most sense. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a wash with some acetone. Clean the crystals up, hopefully. Get rid of that yellow. Nasty color. Okay, so here's our crystals after filtering. Definitely a lot more white. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and move it to this beaker and dry them out a bit. Okay, so here is our methylamine hydrochloride. You can see it's a much, much nicer white color. And I just started to melt and burn some of it. And it's gonna turn yellow over there. So I need to take it off the heat. But this stuff is so incredibly hydroscopic, I'm not even gonna be able to weigh it because I can already see, you can see on the sides where it's absorbing moisture right out of the air. Um, so yeah, there we go, methylamine hydrochloride. And we'll be using this in an upcoming synthesis. So that wraps it up for today's video on methylamine hydrochloride. So yeah, bye.